You be whatever you want to be when you grow up. It's a phrase all children should hear because it's more than just a phrase. It's a spark. It's a spark that'll start the slow burning fuse that will result in an explosion in that child's future chosen field, a field they feel passionate about and thus can excel in. It's a phrase children from middle to upper class families will hear from the time they can understand the concept of a job or a career. Some kids from poorer families will hear it too, but not all. Some inner city parents will say it to their children with a ferocity that comes from being told the opposite all their lives. Some parents will not be able to find it to look at their child and say such a phrase when they themselves know and face the obstacles that stand between their child and their dreams. You can be whatever you want to be when you grow up. A kid from the hood hears this and looks out towards their future with the same hope and enthusiasm as any child born in suburbia. As time goes on for this dreamer from the rough end of town, this phrase, this spark, is shaken to its core. The realization that you sit at the bottom end of the socioeconomic scale is anything but gentle. It's a cold slap, and for far too many children, it comes far too young. This cold slap, it knocks you down, tears the wind out of your sails. The kid from that neighborhood struggles to their feet and looks out at the world with weathered eyes. They know that in order to reach the same endpoint, the same goals as someone born of privilege, they will need to face twice as much. They will need to overcome twice as much. Some kids spark burn strong, unfaltering, determined. Far too many, however, are doused reduced to a number. I'm 24 years old, and I'm a professional filmmaker and educator here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. This is where I grew up, Winnipeg, Manitoba's North End, a constantly evolving and changing neighborhood that has become known as one of the worst areas in Manitoba due to high rates of crime and poverty. Anyone who grew up in the North End will tell you straight up, the place has its problems. But as there are their grievances, you'll see pride shine through, unwavering pride for the neighborhood they call home. Like me, they know the close-knit ties, the generosity, and the toughness exhibited by North Enders. Many people look at neighborhoods like the one I came from, and they see nothing but helplessness, despair. I see potential, limitless potential. And not only potential to simply escape poverty, no, potential to raise the neighborhood up and even change the way society views it. In many ways, I'm a direct product of the North End in the 1980s. My background includes Russian, Ukrainian, Métis, Ojibwe, and Soto with a few others somewhere there in the mix. My, both my parents were born and raised in the North End after my grandparents moved to the city from farmlands and reserves. My parents are two of the strongest people I know. Life was not easy for them. As children, they dealt with sometimes crushing poverty, as well as abuse and discrimination. And they both not only survived, but they worked tirelessly to get their child a better life than they had. You could be whatever you want to be when you grow up. Hell yeah, my parents said it to me all the time. But they were also very realistic about the work I would have to put in, and they did their best to prepare me. My parents would have given me the world if they could. Many would for their child. But as much as they might want it, the world is not free to give. Now, my story has ended up with considered one of the good ones. How it became one of the good stories is what I want to share with you today. I've been some sort of artist since I can remember. Whether it was writing, drawing, performing, I caught the art bug young. As a kid, I didn't really know what it was leading towards. It was just something fun to do. As a teenager, like it does for every teenager, my world got more complicated. Art was a way I was able to cope with and express how I felt with my new, uncomfortable world. In regards to dreams, this is where the divide between myself and someone born of privilege began. You could be whatever you want to be when you grow up. I want to be an artist, a filmmaker. This realization was my spark. My cold slap? The following realization that to become what I wanted to be, I would need training and resources my family simply could not afford. This is where I was lucky enough to find my equalizer, something that put me back on equal ground to someone born of privilege. In grade nine, an English teacher asked me if I'd be interested in attending a film class at an organization downtown. She told me if I applied with a letter explaining why I wanted to attend, the organization might allow me to attend for free. I did, and I got in. Little did I know that six-week program would lead me down the path that led me to my career, and to the stage today. The class itself was not the equalizer. The fact that it was accessible to me despite my socioeconomic background was. The fact that there was a program in place that allowed me to experience the same opportunities as someone born of privilege was the true beginning of my career. Years later, I returned to the same organization and volunteered to teach, something I've been doing with a dozen or so organizations since. Access to arts programming for inner city youth is not only a proven positive addition to education and community, but a vital component in the recovery and growth of these troubled neighborhoods. In addition, making these resources accessible to this specific demographic of youth 
has the potential to change the art scene worldwide. Great, let's do it then, shall we? It seems simple, but like most things, it's more complicated. Arts programming, while being proven time and time again is beneficial, is constantly on the chopping block, it seems. Things like art class, drama class, film class, are seen as electives, extracurricular, which are basically just terms to say, not vital. You can be whatever you want to be when you grow up. It's true, not all the students I've taught are gonna go on to become professional artists. In fact, I can only name a small number that even pursued it after graduation. But if you step back and look at arts programming from a different angle, you'll see that the benefits of having these programs in place far outweigh the costs, especially for children in low-income communities, regardless of what career they choose to pursue. Now, I'm sure everyone here can remember the absolute hell that is being a teenager. It's awkward, it's weird, your body and mind are changing rapidly. One minute you have to ask to use the bathroom, and the next minute you're being asked what you want to do with the rest of your life. You could be whatever you want to be when you grow up. On top of the challenges a normal teenager faces, a kid from a low-income community might be facing a whole other layer of problems. Depending on the individual's home life and background, they might be facing racism, poverty, hunger, abuse, early exposure to alcohol and drugs, pressure to join gangs. I could go on. But the list of realities for some children is unfortunately endless. You hear the term at-risk youth thrown around a lot. And basically what it boils down to is, is that these children are more vulnerable and thus more likely to be led down an unhealthy path. But many people don't realize is that these dark paths are presented to some children at such a young age that they can't possibly comprehend the consequences of following them. When everyone around you is on an unhealthy path, how can you even recognize that it's unhealthy? For many, this is where the cycle of violence begins. On average, one third of children living in a high violence neighborhood can be diagnosed with mild to severe post-traumatic stress disorder. Something we commonly see in soldiers returning from war zones. In most cases, it goes undiagnosed and untreated. This is where arts programming yields enormous benefits. Instead of perpetuating further violence, art of all mediums allows students to express what they're feeling through what they're creating. Many of my students have described art to me as a coping mechanism. On average, we have 60,000 thoughts per day, and 95% of those thoughts are the same day in and day out due to repetition in our experiences and our environments. Now imagine almost all those thoughts were negative because of who you are and where you live. It's pretty bleak. But when we create art, we aren't just simply expressing ourselves, we're actually giving our brains a break, an escape from the thoughts that are otherwise the same the day in and day out, which reduces stress. Our, our brain's ability to grow new connections, it's called brain plasticity, or neuroplasticity, and art has been directly linked with the rapid growth of these connections, which increases psychological resilience. Studies have also shown a spike in dopamine when we create art. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter responsible for feeling good, it's been nicknamed the motivation molecule, and it boosts concentration, focus, and drive. And sure, we can see some of these benefits in mandatory school subjects and sports, but one thing that makes art so unique is the ability to cater to every different learning type. As it is currently set up, the North American education structure strongly caters to students who excel at the memorization of material and at reproducing it, reading and writing learners. However, many students, in fact, the vast majority, are not this type of learner. In math class, I can ask, there's only one right solution to every problem. In art class, I can ask students to draw water and get an endless amount of results, none of which are wrong. Art of all kinds encourages creative thinking and problem solving, and it allows students to come up with their own unique solution to every problem. This type of out-of-the-box thinking has been shown to increase the growth of neurons in the brain, something that's fundamental during developmental years. Now, from this science and mental health standpoint, art of all kinds should be mandatory in all schools, right? Absolutely. But the reason I stress it's so hard for low-income communities is because while the starting and the finishing line might be in the same place for everyone, for those not born of a certain level of privilege, their track might be littered with obstacles, obstructions, traps. These obstacles weigh on you mentally and physically as you try to take them on, just trying to keep that finish line in view. We must begin to view art as a tool for breaking down these obstacles, not as simply an elective. You can be whatever you want to be when you grow up. I say it to my students whenever I can, when they want to quit, when they want to scream in frustration, when all they can see is helplessness. You can be whatever you want to be when you grow up. Even if they've heard the opposite all their lives, I remind them they're so much more than just a kid from that neighborhood than a kid from a single parent household, than a kid who has seen things that race through their brains day in and day out. I do my best to put a pencil, a paper, a camera in their hands and say, this is your tool, your outlet, your escape, so use it. You're unique, and you're not just a statistic, and you're so important, 
and your story is so important, so tell it to me, tell it to the world. A student who couldn't look me in the eye three years ago stood on stage this year and sang a solo in front of a packed house. She had that in her her first day, but a stable program that allowed her to grow and express herself is what brought it out. Artists like Kendrick Lamar, Spike Lee, Buffy St. Marie, uh, countless others. At one point, they were just kids in the hood, kids from the wrong side of the tracks, but they overcame the expectations that society placed upon them to become international successes in their fields. But on top of that victory, they share stories from their communities with the world. When a young kid from Compton sees Kendrick Lamar rapping on the Grammys about issues that face him every day, it gives him hope. It validates his experience and presents a healthier path amidst the darkness. In film, as well as television, theater, most artistic mediums, we unfortunately see a severe lack of diversity, female, and LGBT representation. This not only leads to unrealistic artistic representations within these mediums, but has been shown to directly affect how minorities view themselves. For me, the solution lies in any inner city community in the world, in any neighborhood on the wrong side of the tracks. These demographics are represented more in these areas than in any other place. Thousands and thousands of potential young artists that just need the tools to fan their spark and burn their obstacles down. You can be whatever you want to be when you grow up. A kid from the hood hears this for years, from their parents, their family, their friends. But society has shown them that that might not be the case. But now, they have a pencil and paper sitting in front of them. And that phrase begins to sound true again. Possible. Their handshakes. Their spark got doused years ago. But this new tool, this new skill, is starting to fan that spark into what has potential to be the brightest flame of all. This young dreamer knows that there'll be more obstacles in their way, more things to overcome. But now they have a way to overcome them, to cope with them. And when they're done with it, <laughs> the world will know their story. A powerful story filled with diversity and truth. A story that might just show the next kid from the hood that they're not alone. Our responsibility? Get these kids in these programs. Keep these programs alive and accessible. These programs not only have the power to help the individual, but to give that individual the chance to help their community and to change the art scene worldwide. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech.